All right, well, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, and of course, this will be available on our YouTube channel. Um, so you are welcome to watch this. I will put this up uh, by the end of today. So if you'd like to go back and watch it again, or have colleagues who may want to see it, uh, that will be available. Um, hopefully you all saw the, uh, the PDF download that came with today's uh, release. That should give you uh, information on just about everything, but I wanted to do a live presentation to, to show you some of those features and really understand what they all mean. We are very excited about this release. It is probably one of the biggest ones we've done um, with some really uh, incredible changes. So we are excited to show that. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. And the first place we're gonna go is to our, uh, our contact section. I'm gonna go ahead and search everything using our universal search. And that obviously gives me full access to everything related to this, but we wanna look at just our contacts. And we're going to look at a particular contact, Charles Harrison. So uh, probably the most impactful thing you saw here was the summary screen. Uh, we have put a lot of new information um, on the summary screen. So it's easier for you to get around uh, and take action related to, uh, to people when you're on this screen. A couple of things I want to make sure to point out. Um, is that uh, we have, uh, obviously everything is laid out a little bit differently, um, but it should feel familiar and easy to go around. But a couple of the great new features are uh, up here. We broke down connections and you can even go ahead and add a new connection by clicking the plus. Um, so while you're on the screen, you can add a connection. Also activities. A lot of our conversations uh, and feedback particularly with people using moves management, or uh, as we call it, opportunities in our system, is, um, is around being able to track recent activities, uh, both last activity and upcoming activity related to a contact. So right here, we see our next activity and our previous activity, which was a board meeting on 7-Eleven. And if we're ready to go ahead and schedule a new activity, once again, we use our green plus sign to, uh, to go ahead and create a new activity. I'll click there and it should feel just like your normal um, activity setup. Uh, the most incredible new feature probably is around this stream right here. And what we've done is we've given you a live stream showing all of the activities, transactions, peer-to-peer, uh, anything, uh, case management, anything related to a contacts activities is now directly on here in order. Um, we see we have four activities. If I click on the four, it's going to drop down and show me those most recent. So they're broken uh, essentially into um, date groupings, things that happened during that time. I can click on transactions and it's gonna show me my transactions. Uh, and obviously this is all drill down. So if I click on that, that's going to take me to the transaction. You'll see this in a number of places, including on contact, uh, on organization and household screens. So great new feature right here. We've Charles Harrison joined a CrossFit Long Island page and a team. Um, so all of this really gives us a real great view of an individual. Um, another great thing we've added is you'll notice that the tabs are now um, going to load much faster as I click through. Um, and this hopefully is uh, viewable when you're looking in a web presentation. But uh, we've really speeded up this process. If you get here and you think there's information and it's not appearing, just go ahead and click the refresh button and it will. Um, so speeding up was a big part of the changes. They are now loading dynamically. Well, uh, we mentioned the stream on the front um, page. We can also look at our stream right here. And that's going to show me all this activity uh, that has taken place. So a couple places to look at. This is a longer um, stream of activity. And this is an area we're going to be continuing to develop. We recognize that when you're dealing uh, with individuals, uh, having a great view of all of their interactions with you in one simple place is very valuable. And that's exactly what you're getting here. Um, 
We've added, uh, for donations, we've actually added a graph here. So you can see that information in a graph visualized form. And then this is information that was at the top of the screen prior um, and was laid out all throughout the screen. And now we've just made it um, tab based. And as we click through, we can see all of this relevant information on a contact. Um, and the last thing I wanna show you that as we're uh, on this uh, contacts screen is that um, we now can drill directly down to an opportunity. Um, so if you have a major gift associated with this or a grant or a, uh, or, or a corporate gift, um, whether it's uh, for an organization, a household, a foundation, a person, uh, all of that is now available right here and we can click through. You would, it did not used to be clickable. You'd have to go into the interactions and to the, uh, to the opportunities. It is now available right here. And also a major change that we'll see when we dive a little bit further into opportunities is that prior, um, the only, uh, the opportunity was primarily being connected with the primary person on an opportunity. Now, everyone who is connected with the opportunity is, uh, it is viewable and visible to them um, on their, on their record. So there's a lot more interaction. Now you can jump around and see an opportunity, um, and also activities related to opportunities for all of the people, uh, associated with it. So as we, um, continue to go through here, uh, and so I'll click here, I'm going to click through and you'll see what I'm talking about. We'll open in another window, but that's going to take me directly to the opportunity and now I can manage that. And we're gonna look at opportunities, as I said, in a little bit. So um, we'll dive further there. Uh, here, we go to an organization page and we're gonna get a similar layout. Um, we have all of our relevant information, just like we had it before, and, but uh, now viewing it as we did with, uh, with, the, um, with the individual records. Um, but what's great here is in the stream, we actually have stream related to everyone associated with the organization or the household. So when you go to, if Outback Media is an organization where we are dealing with or trying to work with, they have many people who work there, um, that will connect the people who work there, um, who have a relationship to it. Um, you see Charles Harrison, and there we go down to David Aponte, who is also connected to this. So. Uh, this is really about opportunities, about moves management, and about being able to access um, a lot of information about how people uh, are connected. So um, please play around with that, get to know it. It is extremely valuable um, as you're managing uh, not just individuals, but organizations, household, and even foundations. Um, the, uh, when we go to interactions on an organization, uh, this also shows, and this existed before, but not a lot of people were aware of this, that in organizations' relationships, you will see the giving related to, uh, under their transactions, the giving related to that organization. So these are employees of that organization. And as we scroll through, and obviously Charles Harrison is our demo and he appears in a number of places. But as we scroll through, and I'll try to get where it's not just Charles, um, here we have the organization gift. Uh, there's Iman also gave on it. So people who are connected to this organization, we're seeing this, their transactions, which is usable obviously for reporting, for information in a lot of different ways. Um, so that's primarily it for what you see on the summary screen, although that is a major change. Uh, if you logged on and you're having trouble and you're getting the, um, the green wheel just spinning, uh, try refreshing your browser. That's a, that is a, a function of browsers and doing a hard refresh is the way to do it. Um, in PC, you want to do control F5 to refresh. And if you're using a Mac, it's command R. Uh, so if you're spinning, try a hard refresh and that should uh, bring you ready to the new system. So one of the uh, great features uh, we've added here is if you've ever entered a job title for an individual, and we'll see, we, yeah, we don't have a job title here, so this is a great example. If you ever, if you recall, one of the things you had to do was go into configuration, create that job title, and select it. Uh, the, the idea was that uh, originally it allowed you to sort of see how many people have the same title, look at people by title, uh, executive director, um, chairman, uh, chief executive officer, what have you. But what we've done now is um, now those, those exist. And as I start typing, 
it's going to offer me, uh, oh, there was a little visualization bug due to the size of my screen. Um, it, it, it will, uh, here we see it up here. This is actually because of, uh, I don't know why this is happening, so I'm gonna report this. Um, but it, if it doesn't already exist, create a vision, chief visionary, and we, we can go ahead and select that. But let's say we wanted to create a totally new one, and we were doing chief bottle washer that doesn't exist. Oops, having trouble spelling. I can go ahead and add new. And I, are you sure you want to create this record? Okay, I do. And now that will be, um, not only are you able to enter it on the fly, but it will be available for future people uh, as they go to enter it, it will appear in the dropdown. So really important time-saving feature. Um, and we're very excited about that. If you've ever entered titles, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, let's go to the search. Uh, we'll go to our search area up here and our search and manage. And one of the things we, we really tried to do here was make it so that you uh, didn't have to click around and use advanced to find people. So now in this search, you can enter really anything that will help you find somebody, a name, email, phone, uh, their contact ID. So you just um, type it there and it gives you an opportunity to do fuzzy search. Or if I click that, it'll turn it into exact search. So exact search will make it so I have to look for exactly the, it will look for exactly those words or fuzzy search will make it so it's looking for um, something similar uh, or a partial version of that, that word. So that is on the um, number of our, our search and manage listings pages. Uh, you can now do that. Also, um, how do I want to sort? That used to be in the advanced filter. Now it's available to me right here. And I can select, do I want to sort by ID, date created, or name, if I switch to one. And then I can uh, do the directional sort. So I click that and it's going to do reverse and now it'll do the other direction. So again, uh, trying to reduce clicks. We know that that's um, one of the things that everybody across every organization is trying to do is reduce your clicks. Um, and we believe we're, we're really getting close to doing that. Um, uh, something uh, we've added and we'll go ahead and show you this is um, is pre-formatted Excel downloads. So I'm gonna go ahead to automation and workflow, my queries. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and see, find one that's got a lot of returns. So let's say I've got this, uh, this, this query right here. I'm gonna go ahead and export it. Sorry, I really should have had this ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and download this. And I have to actually give me one sec. We'll go to our downloads. Move this over to this screen and now you'll see. Um, so now you'll see that these have been these are now pre-formatted for you. So instead of just dumping it all into a spreadsheet, um, we've got the name of this, um, uh, this report, we've got the time that it was created, and then we also, uh, our header row is, is set up right here. Um, you may not be able to see this clearly, but it is now banded. Um, so the rows are banded colors, making it easier to view, especially when you print out. And also they're preset to filters. So I go ahead and use my Excel filters. So um, this was the sort of the thing that you had to get to this spot uh, earlier on with the old the old way of doing it um, to get them in the order like this. Now the information is dumped directly into this pre-formatted styling. Um, so we're obviously really excited about that. Okay. 
Okay. So moving right along, um, and again, I don't think we have any questions. Just, oh, oh I'm going to we'll zoom back in, uh, make it a little bit easier to, to, for, for you guys to view. Apologize. So now getting into our marketing automation and campaigns capabilities. Um, one of the great new things here is we go to reports and analytics, and we'll go to my initiative analytics. And as you can see, we've actually, um, we visualize the reporting data. So I'm gonna look for here, uh, here's one I like to show, NOC. Okay, and this is a typical email send. And what we see here is instead of having just the data, we have quick visuals to see the success. Um, and when I roll over it, it allow me drill down to all the numbers. So um, this is a quick glance at how successful something has been. And then I can go ahead and click on the number and click through rate, page visit or conversion rate, click on that number and that will take me there. So um, again, trying to uh, really help with visualization of the materials. Um, one of the questions we got, and I think this was in response to the export I just did, uh, the spreadsheet, can we control what happens and how it looks? Um, we, we, you can work with client services, your, um, our team to set up a template fitting uh, if you need it in a certain way. Uh, we've always done that. Um, what we've added now here is that straight out of the box, without doing anything, you're given a um, much easier to use uh, spreadsheet download. But we can um, help you if you have specific reports and they need to look a certain way, our client services team uh, can certainly help you develop that. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, another great feature that was added and we'll go to uh, part of our automation workflow. Um, I'm gonna go to creative. Okay, we'll go ahead and send an email. Um, and I'm gonna query, find my list, um, and I'm gonna go with this list right here. Okay, and now the new functionality we have here is the ability to calculate your audience size. Because your query may return that you've got, you know, hundreds, thousands of people, but that doesn't necessarily, or, or returns, that doesn't necessarily mean you have a good grasp of how many are gonna receive it, how many are blacklisted, how many are um, duplicates, how many are do not send, how many are deceased. So we go ahead and click that, and now we have this great estimated email audience size that shows us our size, shows us our opt-outs from that list, um, uh, blacklist, deceased, and then our net audience size. So uh, again, great data uh, at your fingertips. And you'll also notice that this same functionality exists on um, in queries. We'll go to our queries. And again, kind of find a, something with some results. And I can do the same thing here, an emailable audience or a mailable audience. So it'll look at that list and it'll tell me, how, uh, it'll do that same summary, how many are ready for email uh, and then how many fit the criteria if, if it's a mailable audience. So that's um, it. Uh, one of the things you may have seen in the listing and I, I could show it real quick, is just that um, if you use our, um, our email widget for signups, our widget generator down here, in the campaign section of tools and references. Um, we've added a lot of our, uh, our fraud, um, uh, fraud prevention tools to this so that if you've got spammers that keep hitting your sign up tools, um, we've upgraded this capability. So when they're built now, they will do a much better job of blocking spammers. Um, you cannot port over what you had, so you'd have to recreate a form. But if you've ever done it, you know it's very easy to do. Um, I simply select my list um, that this form will feed if I have a specific one or just I want a general one. Um, and then my form fields that I want, I want people to fill out their first name, last name, and it obviously always will ask for email, so it doesn't even give you that option. I generate my form, scroll down to the bottom. Now I've got my form code and then I just page, paste this on any page and that will now uh, show up uh, there. 
So um, if you want to utilize this, if you're having issues with spamming, you want to utilize this tool, uh, go ahead and re you're going to have to recreate your widgets, but you saw how easily that is done. All right, moving right along. So we're going to jump over to opportunities now. Um, as you guys know, we've put a lot of effort into opportunities, um, our version of moves management, um, and how you can use it, how we've built it out and made it a better tool. Uh, if you missed our webinar with Andrew Caton of the Fisher House Foundation, um, who helped, who showed how he's using it, great insight over how he set it up, how he thought about it, and how it's been successful for him. I highly recommend go to our YouTube channel to watch that. And uh, if you want to know where to get the YouTube channel, it's very easy. Um, I go up here to my main screen, go to the bottom, and this is on everyone's page. Watch our YouTube channel. I go there, click there. It's going to give me the, um, the URL to get there, and I can easily get there from any screen I'm on. So I um, highly recommend watching that. Uh, Andrew has done a great job in using opportunities. Uh, but now you'll see we've, we've, we've really taken it to the next level. So go ahead and look at our opportunities. Okay. And we're going to look at this particular opportunity and for uh, visualization's sake. Uh, we've got it here. One of the things you'll notice, um, one of the big changes if you've used opportunities, is that um, mine and all. So this is the ability to look at just your opportunities or to look at all the opportunities. Uh, that used to be in the advanced section. It is now down here. And I believe it's now defaulted to all versus mine. Um, I don't think that was the case before, um, but uh, extremely helpful. Let's go ahead and look at what we've got here and some of the uh, improvements we've made to this. First of all, right here on the details section, we see our contacts, solicitors, and most importantly, how many moves have happened on this particular solicitation or opportunity. So I can click, I click on that number. And now it'll show me the moves that we were in the in-person meeting stage uh, step and the referral provided step. Um, and it shows you how long, obviously this is demo data, which is why this isn't very realistic, um, but this will show you how long you were in a particular stage. So I'm gonna go back to what we were looking at before. Okay, um, and then activities, I click on my activities and that existed before, but that was over here. And now we have that directly over here. Again, one of the improvements that was made was that um, anybody who is a contact or anybody who is on an activity will have that reflected respectively on their contact records, whether it's an organization or a person. Again, it had been that it was just the primary contact, um, but that was not, um, the idea there was to keep it simple, but we actually realized from our users who are using it with great uh, regularity that they liked having, uh, they, they wanted to have all of that information accessible no matter what screen they're on. This being an integrated platform, easy to do. And that's why you guys use Shared Engine because you have it all integrated in one place uh, and done easily. So um, the uh, other things that we have on here now is our step, uh, current step we're at, and then our next step um, it shows what that would be. So that's just the common order, the auto order, that that's what would come after this. Obviously, you don't have to follow that, but it gives you a quick um, view over what, uh, what your next step is. If there was an activity created with that step movement, uh, that would be here as well. Um, so that is, those, those are some of the main functions that were added here. Again, you can always go in directly to manage this, uh, to look at our, uh, our opportunity. We can go ahead and make our move here. Um, and we've got our contacts, solicitors, moves, activities, conversions, and also um, stream was added to this as well. So the beauty here is now we have a full view of everything that's taken place related to this particular um, opportunity. So we have, uh, no matter who was doing it, who created it, uh, it is all here. So when you go to look at an opportunity, you get a true sense of the historical activity that has taken place, whether it is a meeting that was sent, uh, that was created, whether mail was sent, um, whether a transaction took place, a web page visit, or so forth. So um, again, that's the value here, uh, is all the data in one place, and this is another way we've uh, presented it to you. 
Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm going flipping through my pages uh, to, to make sure we're getting to all the right things. Um, and you'll recall on the contact record, we go back to Charles Harrison's record, um, that uh, next activities, you recall next activity, that would be possibly associated with an opportunity, last activity also associated, um, and then clicking here for our most active opportunity. Okay, so now heading into some of the new um, features and capabilities around events and peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So we'll go over to our events section. And again, keep in mind, we're looking in our demo account uh, where we play with all the time and test things and try things. So some of the data may not be as normal as it is uh, with yours. Um, but actually this morning I went to, we have one of our, um, our clients is uh, uh, Appalachian Trail Conservancy. They're having a, their gala dinner tonight, event tonight. Um, and just to see how it works with a real client, I went over uh, and uh, their, uh, their, uh, their, their, Bus uh, business analyst, sorry, technical project manager, uh, showed me what how it's looking with them and it was perfect. Um, so it's very exciting. So we go to registrations here and we're gonna find a particular event. Okay, and let's look at this event, uh, the National Optimism Coalition Invitational. So, um, Couple things that are real great here. First of all, this um, you'll see the name missing with the eight. That's because these are guests that their names have not been filled out yet, uh, but these tickets were purchased by the host. But each of these registrations belongs to that host. And as we see right here, Walter Adams, that number eight. So this indicates that uh, this person has registered for eight event or has eight registrations under their name historically. We click on it and that will take us to all, uh, that's a drill down and that will take us to all of Walter Adams associated registrations. Um, so that number is a great feature because what that does is that tells us that um, when somebody comes to an event, if there's no number next to it, we know it's their first event and we can treat them uh, appropriately. If that uh, number has a number like an eight, we realize, hey, this person's attended other events and we can say welcome back and really give them the VIP experience. That's what donor journey management is all about, understanding how people interact, um, how many times they interact, understanding their story in relation to your organization. And right here we have uh, fantastic data showing us Walter has registered for eight, has eight event registrations under his belt. Next great thing, and I think you're going to be pretty impressed with this, is, okay, we've got our list of people who are um, guests or hosts of this particular event, and we want to go ahead and send them an email. Um, now, you used to have to go into Query Builder, build a query and um, for this event and send it that way, or create a report um, and send it that way. No more. Now we go right here to email event attendees. And I, I wish there was a drum roll because I think it belongs. And now we can go ahead and we select our event, National Coalition Invitational. We can have, we see all of our um, registration types all. Do we just want to communicate to our hosts? Do we just want to communicate to our guests? We set up our um, default uh, value. If there's no name associated with this, what they'll say, what they will see. And then global suppression. Um, I'm not going to get into that uh, right now, but global suppression is a new functionality uh, that's been added in. It's a little bit more in beta stage, but what it does is it applies global suppressions to um, all attendees. So if somebody says, um, in the case of on, if somebody is on the global suppressed list, do not send them any information. Then when we send this email, we can uh, make sure that that is respected here. We can also turn it off and have it sent to them because if somebody is indeed a, uh, an audience uh, a registrant for an event, they probably want to get communications around that event. So we're going to take the chance that they do and we can turn that off. But I have that here and I can preview and that will sh this will show me, and again, uh, only because we're zoomed out so you guys can see it on the screen, that'll show me all of the people who are on this particular um, list. So, uh, and then I go ahead and click continue and that's just going to take me over to my email sending. Um, I just select the message I'm sending. I've got my list. I've got my, I'm going to name my blast and then I go ahead and send. So, um, Great new function, again, reducing clicks, reducing the time it takes to do things. And uh, you're going to see that here in even greater value when we go to peer-to-peer. -to -peer. 
Okay, so let's go to our peer-to-peer um, -peer personal pages. Okay, and we will, uh, let's look up a particular event. We're going to look up the uh, Old Glory Relay Race. Refresh that. Okay, and now I have everybody who um, is it who, who has a fundraising page for that particular event. I could also do it by microsite if we wanted to get a little bit more granular, or I could do it just to an individual. But that same function is now here. Functionality is now here. I go to more. I click email blast, and um, and I'm going to zoom out so you get a little bit more. Oh, maybe that's not a good idea. It gets too small for you guys. Um, here we can target that audience. So I select my event. In this case, it was the um, oh glory relay race and I can send an email to everyone I can send it to just team captains or I can select to send it to just non team captains and I can go ahead and preview and see who that list is I can also set some limitations that I want to send it to everybody who has raised between zero and five hundred dollars or is at only fifty percent or less of their goal so I can say everybody who's at zero to point five um, and right now, that's how you want to set it up, 0.5. Uh, I think it will eventually be that you can uh, type in 50%. Um, or days until the event. So you want to send this to everybody. Um, maybe this is to a microsites, and you want um, uh, people who are a certain amount of days to the event. Again, personalization. Again, global suppression. So, uh, And then we go ahead and click continue. So again, reducing clicks, putting more um, capabilities right at your fingertips, easier to target people with one-off communications. Uh, and the next thing we'll be doing from this is the ability to schedule these. So you can create this kind of list and go ahead and schedule it out. Um, so let's look at, um, let's scroll through here and Um, so one of the things you'll see right here is now we've incorporated um, the, uh, the, the, that visualization of data right here into people's peer-to-peer -peer, uh, fundraising pages. Um, the reason you're seeing it sometimes and not others is because in this case, they've established their goal. Uh, in the others, they have not put a goal. And again, this is testing. So a lot of this was done prior to when that was required uh, or was turned off that requirement. But if you have a goal um, that you require of people, you can now look at this and see how close they are. So you get a great visualization just by scrolling of how close people are. In this case, 650% uh, doing real good in terms of raising money for that particular event. Um, so that is, let me go and make sure that we've, we've touched on everything. Um, again, if you have questions, please go ahead and enter them in the Q and a, um, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, and you can also see one of the features that's here, and again, this is because it's demo, but you would see this in yours if it's all set up, is days left. So we would see how many days left until this, this person's particular event. So we know whether, you know, if it's 100 days, they've got time. If it's two, we might want to be concerned about whether they're going to be hitting their goals. Um, but in the case of the, these numbers, we can roll over again, and you'll have that data. Um, the other, there are a couple other things around peer to peer just for sign in. Uh, I don't have the ability to demonstrate that um, uh, just because of the environment I'm in. But uh, now you have it from a single uh, user uh, dashboard. It is easier for people to uh, access the different uh, access multiple uh, events they're signed up for. Um, and also, if they go to sign into an event that they're not registered for, it will let them know that. And um, it will also indicate, hey, you are registered for these events. Is this where you meant to go? So again, just creating a more uh, uh, enjoyable experience for your, um, your users. So I got a question around, um, I've been working in the system today, had a couple of times where I created new records um, or added new fields in the system, logged me out, I had to log back in, and then it would save the new record. 
is that an added security feature now? No, that's not. Um, what that may be is a matter of um, one thing to be aware of on mornings where we have where you have um, a release. Uh, sometimes there will be refreshes of the system because uh, once it's live and people are using it, we might notice um, uh, something that needs to be added to it. They'll do a quick uh, refresh, and that may be what was logging you out. Um, that should disappear uh, probably for the by this uh, now and for the rest of the afternoon. Um, hopefully, that's the case. Um, Hopefully you also found that in this particular uh, release, we've really done a good job of getting a lot of the bugs out of the way. Uh, so when it goes live, a lot of things are in place. Um, if you do have issues, obviously reach out to our client uh, services team. Uh, Brian and his team are ready to help you uh, with anything you need. Um, and make sure that things are working for you. Again, sometimes it, it has to do with um, your browser caching things in an old way. So just remember how to do hard refreshes of your browser. Um, that's primarily it. Um, one great thing actually I should, uh, should show you, um, and this was added, uh, just recently. I don't know if anybody's using ad advocacy. If you're not, and you're thinking about it, I highly recommend reach out to the team. Um, our advocacy module has, um, gone through amazing growth in the past few months, uh, and, um, really gives you an opportunity to, to do a great way to interact with people without asking for money. You get hand raises uh, because it's integrated in Charity Engine. It is part of their donor record um, and it is uh, easy to do. But one of the things now in um, we've added is the ability in media and the term is media, but you can actually now add um, people who are not in media, um, but let's say you wanted to do an advocacy outreach to the CEO of a corporation. Um, you can add that individual in now and run a campaign just to that corporation uh, and to that individual. So it's no longer just, um, you know, elected political officials, uh, you know, particularly federal and um, federal representatives, obviously, um, and congressional representatives are obviously included in our system. Uh, but if you wanted to do unique outreaches to specific people or local, you know, community council boards, uh, you now can do that just by creating the individuals in the media section. Uh, if you want to know more, um, please talk to our team. I saw an organization, they just put up their advocacy page, um, I think on Friday afternoon or Monday morning, all they were doing was social media. They sent their first email yesterday around it and uh, they had over a thousand actions by early afternoon. Again, great way to get people engaged without asking them to spend money. Um, and all of that becomes part of their profile. If you haven't yet seen the user center, I highly recommend you do. Uh, it's one of the great new features in the platform, um, the ability for this cross organizational user center, everything, um, People can access all their information in one place. So that looks like it for questions. Hopefully we did a, a solid job of giving you lead time into what was coming. I hope that document uh, that we presented did a good job of explaining things. That is going to be moved up. Now that the webinar is over, that's going to be moved up here. So if you still want to download it um, by the end of the day, that will be up here in the system um, ready to go. Thank you guys for everything you do uh, and being part of Charity Engine, helping make this platform so strong. Um, to Friday is the last day to sign up for the user conference. Please, if you're interested, reach out to me, sign up. It's in the, the registration is any, any one of uh, the links we send um, and make sure that you're not missing that. Um, and that's it. Thank you guys. Have a great day summer. Hopefully we see you all soon. And uh, the next release will be in about two months from now. Uh, and uh, who knows what we'll be in, but we can promise you it'll be fantastic. Thanks so much and have a great day.